Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Razor Basilisk Ultimate. 169 pounds or dollars worth of wireless gaming mouse, and the ultimate in the Basilisk lineup from Razor. This is an unboxing video with a review bolted on and an in depth overlook at the mouse that includes the Synapse software at the end if you stick with me and I'll talk about this mouse and why I like it despite the hefty price tag it is a really nice mouse for a number of different reasons now this is very much a right handed mouse with an ergonomic design that's designed for right handed gamers it has a multitude of buttons on it that you'll see that include 11 programmable buttons I'll show you those in a bit more depth as we go through the video and some interesting highlights that you'll spy on the underside if you're paying attention as well as that nifty little charging dock that you saw me get out of the box a second ago which also has RGB lighting and its base and has a USB pass-through at the top that allows you to plug in the wireless dongle directly into that and then plug the charging base into your PC. Highlights of this mouse include a 20 1000 max DPI level, and as I said, 11 programmable buttons, a customizable resistance scroll wheel, and I'll show you what that means a bit later on, textured side grips, DPI switching on the fly, you'll also note the mouse wheel is sideways clickable, and of course the little charging base station which is very handy to have. One quick note is this charging base station has a little rubberized bit on the bottom which is really nifty. It's kind of got a little bit of tack to it, sticky, slightly sticky so it doesn't move around on the desk which is really handy. You'll notice it has two large-ish metal prongs that jut out underneath and those attached to the mouse keep it in place and keep it charging. This mouse boasts according to Razer 100 hours of battery life when you haven't got the RGB lighting turned on. I question whether that's true as I have had to charge it during use, although I have had the lighting on, so I've probably not been doing a fair test, but it'd be interesting to see if it manages to get that 100 hours. As I said, you can plug the base station straight in. You can also plug the mouse in, so you can use it in wired mode. Comes with a braided micro USB cable. Razer said this is made of a special material that doesn't catch on the desk. I'll leave a full description uh, with all the specifications for you to check out as well as a link to the official page so you can get all the details of the specs but I'll talk briefly about some of the more interesting ones. You'll note underneath a resistance wheel, I'll show you in a minute, and a USB housing for the 2.4 GHz hyperspeed wireless dongle which is Diddy that plugs either into your PC or laptop or as I said into the charging base station that then connects to your PC, which is great because it means you don't have to plug in two USB, USB ports to your PC, which is handy, it's a handy thing to do, and it sort of neatly tucks away in the base station and then you can take advantage of the wireless. You'll note also underneath you have a button to turn the mouse on and off when it's in wireless mode, and a button above that to switch between profiles because this has five onboard profiles that you can program and then switch between by pressing that sort of textured button next to the power button. Also has some nifty, very smooth white feet on it that glide really easily across the desk or surfaces that you're using. It basically reacts really well. Here you can see a close-up of the pins and the buttons I was talking about. So the bottom one is the power button on the left and then the one above that is the profile switching button. You'll note, as I said, the textured grips, you have this on the other side, but the one on the left where your thumb sits as your right-handed gamer is very comfortable. There are three side buttons there, two standard ones, and then this paddle that you can attach or detach at your leisure that can also be programmed, and that's one of the 11 buttons. But as standard, it works as a sensitivity clutch, which allows you to adjust the DPI on the fly by just pressing and holding it. You can reprogram that to be whatever you want it to be, whether it's a macro or another key press or some other action in game. It's a very satisfying button to click though, for sure. As I said, the mouse is sideways clickable, the mouse wheel is sideways clickable, 
and also very tactile. This is a relatively small mouse, it's certainly not for large handed gamers, although my hands are fairly large and I have found it to be pretty comfortable and accurate and fun to use. It also has an interesting switch system which uses a laser that Razer says will prevent double clicks and ensure a very accurate gaming session and I have found it to be very useful and handy for gaming and working very comfortable responsive and no lag or problems there. Here you can see and hear the clicking of the mouse wheel side to side and in and out. And there's some more satisfaction to come in terms of the resistance to this mouse wheel a little while above or below the mouse wheel depending on where you're looking are DPI switching buttons that allow you to switch between the five customizable DPI levels within the Synapse software that I'll show you a bit later on. As I said this tops out at 20,000 DPI which is just ridiculous. I don't know why you'd need that unless you had a gargantuan screen. It is just too high it just goes all over the shop but you can customize it to whatever levels you want and then switch between them on the fly with ease using those buttons which is nice you also get a little pop-up in windows to let you know what level you're on now the resistance wheel underneath is interesting you can plus or minus on that and roll it in either direction and then that customizes the feedback you get from the scroll wheel so you'll note you can hear sound of that that obviously gives you a textured feel to it when you're rolling the wheel tactile response you can roll it one way and make it basically really smooth or you can roll it the other and get that tactile it's not quite as good as the logitech light speed mouse that i tried out a while ago where you could basically spin that forever and it was really smooth action but it is very satisfying and smooth nonetheless and it's nice because you can tweak it to your personal preference that logitech mouse was very much on or off it was either responding or it was spinning and this one is not like that because you could customize it in varying levels and set it to the way that you want it to. Now this mouse has something like 14 different RGB lighting zones within these small areas that are available to be lit up. So you see there's side lighting, lighting on the scroll wheel and lighting on the Razer logo and you can customize those in various zones which is fairly bonkers. And I'll show you some of that in a little while. And here you can see it close up with the obviously classic Razer logo on the rear. And as I said, the base station, the charging dock is also RGB friendly, so you can get that to light up. Interestingly, and I'll show you this in a minute, they light up independently, so you can customize the lighting on an independent basis. And you can also get the base to let you know how much charge the mouse has got, so you can customize the lighting based on that. So set it up in a number of different ways however you want it. I tend to enjoy having them both showing the same lighting if they're on the desk together that just looks the best but you might prefer to have the mouse one color and the charging base the other and you have that option so it's pretty nice to be able to choose, pick and choose the way you want it set up. Docking is kind of fiddly until you get the hang of it it, you know, you have to make sure the pins get in there in there properly and it's a bit of a fuss. But. So here you can see the Synapse software. You'll note both devices are separated within the software. And uh, there are a number of different options in here to tweak things. You can turn the brightness of that RGB lighting on the charging base up and down. And you can choose from a number of different effects as well. As I said, you can get that to show you when you have a certain battery level, for example, so you know when you need to charge or what whether what level of charge it's at. And here's the bit of the oddity in that they have them uh, as different colors, but it is easy enough to set them to the same color. You can do that with either a static color or dive into Razer's Chroma settings and do it there. Here I'm going into the mouse. I'll show you the other settings in a minute, but just quickly showing you the lighting effects for that. So you have the advanced effects and the quick effects. So you can choose the standard static colors, breathing, reactive, or other things. I quite like reactive actually. That lights up and then it changes color when you start clicking and um, gets brighter and dimmer according to the clicks that you're making. It's quite fun to play around with. It looks quite nice and satisfying. The lighting is actually fairly decent. It's not too garish or in your face. It just responds nicely and looks nice on the desk. It actually looks really bright in this video, but it probably isn't that bright in reality. 
Now when, within the Chroma software, which I'll show you in a minute, you can then select the individual LEDs within the zones on the mouse and the two as a pair. So you see here, you can see them split into segments on the right hand side of where those different LEDs are. It's pretty nuts to have that level of customization on a mouse. You see it on keyboards quite often, but I don't think I've ever seen it on a mouse before. It seems pretty crazy. Usually you just get one strip or three zones. I think it's got like 14 or some ridiculous number. And here you can see I've set them up so they both look the same, which personally I think is preferable. And Chroma Studio lets you then play around and it set layers or customize different colors to go between. You can see you've got a layer effect. Here I'm trying to change it into a fire one and then you can set hot and cold on that so it basically looks one temperature color at one end and then a different one at the other. So you've got hot is red and then blue at the other end. You can see it sort of glows. It's got a nice glowing effect and it's on both devices and it's really nifty and the end result is actually pretty cool. This isn't the best RGB lit mouse I've seen, but it does round off a nice package. Now diving into the other settings, you can see you can customize all the different buttons, 11 buttons with a variety of different things, whether that's window shortcuts, text, keys, macros, keyboard functions, whatever else. Razer also has this hyper shift functionality, which allows you to basically double up all the buttons so you can choose a sort of secondary action for each of the buttons as well so you essentially got 22 i suppose buttons on there which is a, a lot of different buttons to customize the way you want them uh whether you're setting up macros or in-game presses i don't know whether you'd use that many i probably wouldn't personally i like having basically the standard setup but maybe with a couple of other buttons here you can see the sensitivity stages you get five stages you can actually change the number of stages within sign up software so you don't have as many. I mean, I probably wouldn't use five personally. As I said, 20,000 is just insane. And I've been using 800 and 1800 and maybe 4,000 at a pinch. But the sensitivity clutch is handy because that allows you to quickly reduce the sensitivity level to a very small amount, like a sniper button, similar to Corsairs. Uh, but you can customize each level the way you want it or you could turn them off. You can also calibrate it in terms of the surface that it's on and the lift off distance and get it working that way if you find that you're lifting the mouse up a lot and moving it across the desk which I know some competitive gamers do then you can calibrate that as well uh, basically you get a lot of different features within this mouse it is very expensive but it is a very premium mouse with an excellent design to it they've obviously put a lot of thought into it the convenience of the base station the wireless dongle the docking up the satisfying paddle the resistance on the mouse wheel the feet that glide really easily the fact you have five onboard profiles those textured grips really nice thumb rests excellent rgb lighting and an overall really nice design if you're a left-handed gamer you're going to be disappointed and if you've got massive hands you probably won't want this mouse but all in all it's a fantastic bit of kit Hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, or hilarious. Be sure to subscribe and check out these other videos, as well as taking a look in the description for links and information you might find useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything you'd like to see extra about this. And have a great life.